Hi, welcome to B Physics. If you're watching this video, you're probably a little bit nervous about your AP Physics 1 exam and you wanna know how to properly prep for that test and get the best strategies possible. That's exactly the focus of this video is six major do's and don'ts in order to get the best prep and the best strategies. Now, over the past 17 years, I've noticed that students really struggle with something, which is the same thing that they struggle with the AP Physics 1 exam, which is developing deep content knowledge in several different areas and being able to apply it to new and sort of unique situations. Now, that's a tough task at hand, so we wanna make sure we get in plenty of review, but the right kind of review, and learn the best strategies and really learn how to implement them and ingrain them into our practice. So, besides that, don't forget to check out the link in the description. There's a document there with a bunch of review videos and strategies. Definitely check that out to help you prepare as well. So let's go ahead and get into these six major do's and don'ts. Now, does that mean that you're not supposed to do any content review? No, of course not. As I said before, definitely check out the link in the description. It's got a bunch of resources there and some pretty lengthy videos to review each of the main units throughout the school year. In addition to that, definitely check out your notes, your labs, take a look at your textbooks, study with your friends, talk to your teacher, go to websites, do all that. Make sure you have a great foundation for all of the units throughout the year, but then don't get caught up in all the minor details and the hardest problems per each unit. After that, move on and prioritize your practice. Practice is where you're gonna really maximize your potential. If you do a lot of practice and you time yourself and put yourself in test-like scenarios, that's gonna be the place where you really do the best preparation because you're gonna practice your pacing, practice implementing your strategies, and also if you answer a bunch of questions, it's naturally gonna be great content review in itself. Now, as you're prepping, should you seek out extra practice and maybe Google some websites to find some more practice? I would say definitely so. But here's the thing to be cautious about. If you Google AP Physics 1 practice exams or practice tests or practice questions, the caliber and the style of the questions is not going to be very similar to the AP Physics 1 exam. They have a very unique style and rigor to them that can't be matched by nearly any single website or book that I've ever seen. So keep in mind that it is good practice, but they aren't going to be very similar to the actual exam itself. Now, how are you gonna get actual questions that resemble the exam? Number one, go to the College Board website. They have all the previous free response questions and the solutions there. Secondly, as far as the multiple choice questions go, your teachers have access to some practice tests that you don't necessarily have access to, but they can give those to you and give you some extra practice as well. So if you want the real deal, definitely get stuff from your teacher as well as the College Board website. If you just want regular old practice, it's totally fine to search the internet for that kind of stuff. But just keep in mind that, as I said, the caliber and style of them is going to be a little bit different. Now, I assume you've seen this AP formula sheet. You've been using it for most or all of the school year. Now, do you need to be memorizing any of these formulas? I'd say definitely not. Just make sure you familiarize yourself with them. Make sure you know what every variable means. That way, when you look at a particular idea or equation, you're gonna be able to identify those variables easily and think about how they're connected. You're gonna be manipulating formulas and taking a look at relationships, and that's gonna be the key to helping you with a lot of problems because there's very little number crunching with that AP Physics 1 test. So you're gonna use them for the relationships and ideas. Now, if you're in the early stages of reviewing, it might be okay to spend a little bit more time in the questions, but the goal is to always put yourself in test-like scenarios. So I would say always time yourself and make sure you stay on pace. So with that being said, you wanna spend most of your time with the reflection piece. So don't spend a ton of time answering the questions and really thinking through all the different ideas and strategies you could be using. Put those strategies and skills into play in a time efficient manner and then spend more time reflecting. Reflect on how you approach the problem, what strategies you did and didn't implement. If you had the right mindset to go into the problem, did you use process of elimination? Really reflect on what you did, make some notes, and then try to progress from there. That's how you're really gonna maximize your potential. Now, over the last several years, I've noticed there's a pretty significant graphing portion on the test. 
You're for sure gonna see some kinematic curves and things like that on the multiple choice section, but in the free response section, there's usually a pretty significant chunk of one of the questions that deals with graphing. So for sure be aware of basic things like the X variable being the independent variable and the Y variable being the dependent, how to scale a graph and how to draw a best fit line. In addition to that, make sure you know how to analyze the data as well with the slope and the area underneath the curve. Now, generally speaking, I'd say that the slope is basically dividing two numbers and finding the area underneath the curve is basically multiplying two numbers. For example, if you have a velocity versus time graph where the velocity is on the y-axis and the time is on the x, if you take your delta v over your delta t, you get the acceleration by taking a look at the slope. When you do v times t, then you get the delta x when you're taking a look at the area underneath the curve. So make sure you utilize those different skills and make sure you know how to draw a solid graph with the scaling and best fit line and stuff like that as well. And if you have that strong foundation in those skills, then you should do pretty well on the graphing sections. Now your content knowledge and skills are only gonna take you so far. In my opinion, Learning the strategies and being able to implement them is the biggest factor in really boosting up your grade. So what I would do is I would definitely check out that document that I put in the description, as I said a few times before. There's a list of all the strategies as long as a pretty lengthy video where all of the strategies are explained and I narrate my thought process through a bunch of different questions as well. Now, the thing about the strategies is this. You don't wanna just learn them and feel like you've got them down. You have to practice them. So what I would do is make a list of the most significant ones and then continue to practice. As soon as they become more and more natural to you, you'll be able to add more strategies into your repertoire. And then that's really gonna help you get the most amount of points possible. So number one, definitely learn all the strategies possible by reading them, looking up videos, talking to your teacher, et cetera. And then from there, really, really practice those. Make sure they're implemented into your practice, and then that way they're gonna come natural when you're in a more stressful situation taking the test.